Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. It took me a long time to figure this phrase out, and I kind of live my life by it, and it is, all I need is within me now. All I need is within me now. Challenging for some of us where we feel that we need somebody else to be whole. Same thing in a marriage where somebody says, yeah, it's my other half. Well, is that the best thing to say? Because it's the other half of you. No, you're you, they're them. We're talking about codependency today and what it can do to impact people and also what you can do to maybe move past it, maybe have some realization. And uh, she's going to help us out with that. This is called Walking Between the Raindrops, and she's a master alchemist, helps people go beyond beliefs.com. And Debbie Unterin is back on the program. Welcome, Debbie. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Speaking of raindrops, it's a little rainy here today, which I don't mind because in order to set my studio up, I actually need not too much sun coming in. Mm. So I'm very happy. I didn't have to throw a blanket over my oh, French wow. doors to keep the sun out. This is perfect weather for a Thursday. Although I'm also having to kind of say goodbye here. I'm not sure when or if I'll be back on with you, Steve, and I am going to miss you. I've taken Damn. a little trip down memory lane by uh, by downloading all of my podcasts and I, I gave them all little, little names to remind me and they are not in order of, uh, of the year, you know, the date that they came, but we've been together for about 15, I think 15 wow. times since September 29th. My gosh, it doesn't Sorry. even feel close to that. It feels like maybe, I don't know, <sighs> a, a month and a half tops, tops. Wow. Yeah. Um, so are you telling me, Debbie, and, and I've loved every minute of it, but are you telling me you're a little codependent? <laughs> With you, yes. <laughs> I'm going to miss you. Yes. Same, same. <laughs> <laughs> it it is so many. I hear this all the time, but with the codependent thing, um, how does it impact people? You know, the one thing. Well, there's many, many things I have to say about it. it. Is really one of my specialties because I have a unique way of seeing it and healing it mm. because I see it as a strategy within subpersonalities, not an addiction. And you know that in the um, the 12 step movement, there is a codependent anonymous, a coda for relatives of codependents, I guess, something like that, like Al-Anon. Um, isn't there one for relatives of alcoholics? So there's, there's a, a belief, again, go beyond beliefs, that you have to get over your codependency now what they do with the addiction model is they say you can't have any more right cigarettes to get over the addiction you have to stay off of cigarettes alcohol according to the addiction model you have to stay off alcohol and so what are they expecting you to do now sex anonymous um and i think there's SAA, Sex Addicts Anonymous, you're supposed to not have sex. Uh, you know, Codependent Anonymous, we're supposed to not have relationships. Now, that's mm. a little insane since human beings are wired to live like animals, you know, in packs or tribes. We need people, but we need to be independent individuals you started saying uh something about the you know two become one is that how you put it in the beginning yeah. well you know when somebody says uh you know my hey, other what, half my better yeah. half or yeah. yeah yeah and that's what i always think of is like they they say and now i'm pronouncing you know you the two become one no no we don't want you to be one mm. we want there to be interdependency between you so that you can kind of circle in each other's orbits, but have your own life. And mm. really, uh, another saying that I have heard in some of the workshops I've taken is that one plus one equals three, that it actually makes you bigger. You have created another entity of the relationship, obviously. 
So that's a really important thing. God, this is just reminding me. I had a, a book waiting to read something to you that, oh, I think you would have loved. Now I'm going to have to use my own um, memory of it to, to try to remember what it said. But it, it was about children. It was about how we don't always come into this life fully. All the parts of us sometimes do not descend with us. So when do the rest of the parts of us descend? In our children. Isn't that an interesting way to mm -hmm. think about it? That because, and this is where I'm really interested, I have not had any babies. I don't have any children. And I've always kind of wondered, a lot of my friends, which is real different than other generations, don't have children either. Maybe we didn't need those other parts, literally personalities. I talk about sub-personalities that I was already all of me and didn't need to find some of the parts of me. You know how, how people say, it's so good to have children because you get to have a second childhood. You get to play and do things that maybe you never got to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, daddies have, you know, girl dads, they gain a lot of sensitivity. And maybe moms that have boys have to gain a lot of toughness. And maybe those are qualities they didn't have before. So I thought that was a very interesting way of looking at things. And it kind of gave me a different perspective on maybe why I don't hmm. have children. I'd have to think about that. You know, why did, yeah. but we make decisions to have children for many different reasons. Uh, sometimes it can be because that's what you're supposed to do, or it could be my spouse really wanted them. And it felt like that should be what I should do. Maybe, you know, you're not fully into it, but that's kind of where you went uh, or just what you're saying. You want to relive your childhood. You, you, and you also love the feeling of nurturing someone else. Um, oh, I'm sure. I mean, that is one thing that I cannot ever have what they say, you know, especially to like young men who are about to have a baby or they don't have a clue. They, you know, they say, how can I, if I'm, I don't know how to take care of myself. And they say, as soon as you hold this little thing in your yeah. hands and you know, you are responsible, it all comes to you. You, you just know your life has changed and you would do anything to protect However, being. however, in my, in my experience and, and on current journey, by the way, if you want to reach out and, uh, anything to say, questions or whatever, instant feedback, Steve at gmail.com. Um, yes, to what you said. And a lot of times a guy will have a daughter and it's like, oh, what do I do? I'm a guy. What do I do? And you, and you figure it out. But when you figure it out, what are you relying on? Instantly, you're relying on what your parents taught you. Oh, for sure. How many people say, I can't believe I'm saying that. I said I would never say that. It's just like my mom or dad's words are coming out of my mouth. But of course. And that's, you know, that's that, something to I, deal I, with. <laughs> yeah, because that might not. And again, I love my parents, you know, all good. But you gravitate to the thing you're most familiar with. You're most familiar with the way you were raised. So you don't even know that you're doing that over again. And that's not to say that the way you were raised was the right way or the best way. So again, we've talked and how about, about this. the people that do just the opposite, right? Mm -hmm. Oh no. Am I frozen? Because it looks like you're frozen. So I have to say that I am. Oh, I got Did you. I, freeze? I got you. Uh, maybe okay. split, split second. But okay. yeah, I yeah. was going to say, how about the, like my mother who did not like her mother and wanted to do everything the opposite. Her mother was very snoopy and would read her journals and, you know, diaries or anything, you know. So my mother made a point to never snoop, just wouldn't even ask us questions because she wanted to do the opposite. So we do have people who are mm. influenced by their parents. We're oh, yeah. kind of, 
we're kind of going into children instead of relationships. Well, yes, because... but we, uh, I don't even know how that <laughs> happened, but it's it, it makes sense. Oh, we're talking about codependency, and 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 you have a a child because you want to. You're 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 not whole. You want someone else. Uh, we do have a question, and this is from oh, okay. Tammy in Rochester. Checks in instant feedback, Steve at gmail.com. She says, I was married for 20 years. I got divorced two years ago and often feel lost. I struggled with this many times during the week. How do I move past it? Hmm. Okay. So this leads me into what I really wanted to talk about with codependency because this idea of two becoming one, I, I see that as a lean to, you know, if you go camping, you can make a lean to, you don't need a tent. You can just yes. lean something up. Well, if the thing that you're leaning against falls, it it's completely unstable. You're, you have no more covering. Yes. So yeah. that's what happens when people expect the other person to have all the complementary qualities, like a man wants a little woman that he can take care of, and a woman wants a big, strong man who can take care of her. That's the typical sex role stereotypical uh, way that men and women come together. But there's and so yet, many there's so many variables, though. There's so many oh, variables in that. It's it, it's almost endless. You could have a couple where she's very social, he's not. And he wants to be, but he's well, just not. And and then that's why they come together and they have their own function in the uh, marriage okay. or, or he's got uh, insecurity issues. And, you know, you know, everybody has the male female thing going on. So maybe he's more female. She's more male. I'm just, I'm just rolling okay. all but different types. We're, we're still talking about compensatory traits. Yes. Things that you don't have that you think you're going to find in the other person. But what I'm saying is we have to be whole. And now I'll bring in children again mm. because I, you know, I like to tell people how old I am because I don't think that it's again, stereotypical that I'm months less than six months away from being 70 years old. I would never guess and, that by the way, but just got to share. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. And I say it's because I am completely in touch with little Debbie. I and little Debbie are one. There is no separation between us, but I do have, you know, the growth of, of all these years that I've got yep. to look back on. Although people that knew me when, I am not that different in personality than I was. Anybody who knew me then would completely, they say my voice is very unique. They know me immediately by my voice. My smile, I've talked about before, a lot of my personality. I still lo like to go out and play catch. You know, I love yep. baseball and I love playing. I have nobody to play with anymore at this age, but I wish I could get in a game. You know, so I say that this, this woman from Rochester, and I wonder if it's Rochester, New York, because I went to school up at Brockport right near there. Oh, it is Rochester, Rochester New York. So, okay, yeah, okay, so... I'm, I'm glad I'm not there in the snow right now, but thank ah. you for writing in. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the thing to do right now is to fall in love with your inner child, mm. to do all the time that you can spend healing yourself and protecting this little girl that you once were and making sure that the next person that you are with loves little Tammy, not just big Tammy, but that whoever the the man would be, the way we, we want it to go in alchemy with the, and I may have said this word before, that Carl Jung coined the idea of a quadrinity of two marrying two. A man with his inner woman marries a woman with her inner man. And then mm. they can do guy talk together. They can do girl talk together. Interesting. And, I'm a, we have a call, but I want to get okay. back to that. I want to get back to that. Uh, let's go to the phones. Hi, who's this? This is Victor. How are you? Hey, Victor. How you doing? Uh, Debbie's here. Say hi. Hi, Debbie. How are you? 
Good. Hi, Victor. Thank you for calling. Oh, my pleasure. I got a question. Sure. I've got a wife that's a bit obsessive, and it's starting to drive me nuts. I mean, she always thinks I'm out doing something wrong. I can go to, even mm. if I go to the grocery store to pick up groceries, she calls me constantly, and I, mm. I just don't know what to do about it. Hmm. Did it always, uh, was it always that way, or did something change along the way during your marriage, Victor? Uh, no, it wasn't always that way. I, and I haven't done anything, quite honestly. So I, I, I'm not, I'm not uh, understanding why she's got these insecurities all of a sudden. Hmm. So the first thing that comes to me is, is it in her history, first of all, like literally, that she has been cheated on? If the answer to that is no, then it could be shows she's been watching housewife shows soap operas That's friends she, that she's she, talking to yeah she she's always with the housewife show mm -hmm. the housewives there were those were the yeah Can I, I, I i'm like just shows. curious victor i want to ask her parents yeah. what what was their situation uh her parents were married uh for a long time they got divorced um but they stayed friendly they're still friendly okay you know, right. they're still at all the birthday parties, all the events. Hmm. Debbie, do you think... What Steve is asking, was there cheating? Was there something, you know, that she should not trust a man about? Well, actually, and I think this is what... actually, it was the mother who cheated. Ah. Hmm. Okay, so there are trust issues going on in her. Some of them have nothing to do with her. She's watching them and just imagining all men cheat mm. they're always womanizing and she's projecting yeah, she does, onto but, you uh, yeah because she watches the housewives mo movies and uh, shows and she watches those lifetime movies all the time mm. oh boy and, and you know what there may be something in in her childhood or her history that signals abandonment so now that's going on uh you know the cheating seed shall we say in her brain and then you know maybe feeling that she could be abandoned you know victor might not be there because potentially of that and that triggers her maybe insecurity i try yes. to reaffirm her and i just don't know what to do hmm. what are your this, thoughts this is tough because you can't prove what you're not doing right if she has exactly. this I mean... <laughs> feeling that you are and and i have to say that a lot of women's intuition when they start going through the phone bills, things like that, they're often right. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that you've given her any reason to no. mistrust you. So th this is, you, you might have to have uh, witnesses, you know, personal witnesses for your integrity, people that know you, that can vouch for you. Um, on the days when she thinks that you're doing something, maybe you can, you know, prove that you weren't it, it's going to be hard to prove something that she believes that isn't true you know yeah. and then I mean, other than it, that couples therapy or individual therapy for her yeah, and that, might have that to issue be the of abandonment yeah. abandonment and trust issues those are so steve hit it on the abandonment possibly and then i'm going to bring in the inner child again she has got to feel secure on her own so for some reason she is so dependent on you if we're going to put this into a codependent uh kind of box hmm. she's feeling I... so dependent on you like she can't live without you that she needs to heal any kind of codependency and i say you do that by two things you see instead of a lean to instead of it being me and you i want it to be three which is a much more stable position so there's the quadrinity that Jung talked about an a woman with her inner man but also her inner child makes three and if she can get that stability to feel loved within herself by an inner man is a is a guide it's someone that you feel loved by from within because there is someone watching over you from above. 
I mean, nuns say they're married to Jesus, right? So, right. you know, so that's their man. So, I mean, I don't care if it is Jesus, uh, you know, just to find the love of a man within and the love of her own child that she feels so secure, that becomes the foundation of security that she needs within herself. Because for some reason, she's putting it all on you and it's too much for you to bear. That probably yeah. is about as much as I can say. I hope that helps. Yeah, I, I, th I think you touched on a couple of really good points. Yeah. Uh, well, of course, I, I, I am I available. I am available to do therapy. I do. I see individuals <laughs> and I see couples. Debbie and will I figure it out. Debbie, yeah, I have very is... innovative ways to, you know, to do this work. Like I say, I'm I'm re really different from traditional therapists. So if she wanted it to give like... me a call. Yeah. yeah. Debbie, can... we, you know, we, we just scratch, scratch the surface here, Victor. But um, right. seriously, though, uh, I think we hit a con possibility of a few things here. And I appreciate you calling. Thank you for checking in. Oh, thank you for having me. Uh, and good luck to you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Victor. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, and yeah, it's like a lot of heavy weight on his shoulders when, you know, dude is not doing anything wrong. And then right. he's already guilty. He's guilty as charged, but he didn't do anything. That's tough. Right. Uh, and living every day is like, oh, I'm going to go to CVS. I'm going to Walgreens. And then you have that thought of her looking out the, you know, the curtain or checking his phone and things like that. Yeah. If she could prove that he's not doing something, that's yeah. the hard part for him is he yeah. has to prove a negative, you know? <laughs> so True. that's tough. But, you know, I know we're going to run out of time eventually. I know, I was just checking. Let me, like, yeah. let me tell you again that that my book, Talking to Myself, Learning to Love the Voices in Your Head, has two chapters on codependency. I explain it really well. One of the testimonials I have is that the codependency chapters seven and eight are worth the price of the book just mm. in and of themselves and chapter eight ends with a quiz like a ladies home journal kind of codependency quiz so you can wow. see where you lie in the scheme of codependency and that is my cure is to take the three characters that normally are involved in it it's called the rvp triangle the rescuer victim persecutor and put them into the rescuer becomes the mommy the Victim becomes the little child and the persecutor slash protector is the daddy to the child. All the energy starts going to your inner child. You mother and father, your own child. That's my cure for codependency. Your, your own inner child. Your own, own inner, inner child. child. Just making two, sure. Yeah. If, yes. If both people and then you want each in, inner child of the husband or wife to be able to play together and you want romance between the adults. So, you know, and you want the adult man to love the little girl and the adult woman to love the little boy. Uh, and then you have a happy relationship. I have That's to tell you uh, that I believe I I have a great inner child. I'm just a goofball. Me and my friends, uh, guys I grew up with, we all say the same thing. We're just like big kids. We yeah. really never grew up. We're, we and And I think that's normal until somebody pointed it out and said, do you realize what you guys have there? Like it's, it's, you're, you're, there's something going on there that you don't think, you know, it's powerful that you never really grew up. You're just kind of kids. Yes. We're responsible and all that. Um, but I don't feel that I have, and this is based on what you just said today, in the last few minutes, I don't feel I've harnessed the power of the inner child and used it to my advantage uh, emotionally and in terms of strength. But it's there. Uh, it's, you know, some people, yeah. it's not there. It's just, there's not, I know it's right. there. You know, I'm in touch so with now it. Now make the connection. Make the connection. Talk to him. I don't know if you were called Steve, Stevie, Steven as a little kid, but use the exact term that he was called and talk to him. Yeah. And, you know, I don't have my, my stuffed animal with me, but then sleep with him or, you know, talk to him before sure, you sure. go to bed at night or when you wake up. And be sure to hug him, tell him you love him, and ask him any questions if he has any. You know, sometimes they have wisdom too. Mm, wisdom that to you don't realize that you're not listening to. Well, the one game changer that fortifies all of this in terms of what you said 
was when I had hypnotherapy before we met, I went back and saw him, yeah, faced him in hypnotherapy, spoke to him, reassured him, all of that, you know, kind of classic hypnotherapy yeah. type things. But that's where it was like, oh, okay, yeah. Um, but I never, to me, the inner child thing is normal. You know, I, 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 I'll talk to my dogs and my cats like, you know, like a kid. <laughs> it's like, yeah. you know, I come up with goofy words and I'll walk around the house saying them, you know, like a kid. <laughs> That's the way I am, you know, and my, my kids course. grew up seeing me do that. So hopefully, you know, their inner child has been preserved in that regard too. Um, but it's, it is powerful. And it's when you realize it uh, and, and you've got it and the triangle, you know, just came totally clear. Uh, we are Good. seriously out of time. Um, oh my God. Yeah. Well, great. Good stuff. It has been amazing for these last uh, October, November, December, January, February, five months with you. Wow. So it's wow. probably more than 15 that we've done together. And uh, keep an eye out for me because you may see me again somewhere. So look me up and mm -hmm. uh, I'm not gone, even if I'm not going to be talking to you. It, I'm going to I'm going to feel bad about that because I'll, I'll miss you're, that. You're cheating. But on I'm me, never going to stop cheating, talking. You're, che yeah. you're cheating. <laughs> <laughs> but it has been beyond a pleasure. I, along with everybody else, have learned so much uh, about alchemy, about improving ourselves, about getting in touch with ourselves and uh, just even our connection. That's outside of our connection, which has been just amazing um and i know i'm from i'll know. be connecting with you down the road i don't i don't doubt that Good. for a second yeah so let me give my phone number for vincent Please. or anybody that wants to call 770-434-7488 it's a home phone leave a message if i'm not here awesome debbie uh, gonna miss you but i'll but you know i am you know my my intuition is pretty strong uh my friend lost their wallet the other day. And I said, you're getting it back. Don't worry. And I even said 60 minutes before we got on here, I said, did you get your wallet back? It's coming back. And I just got a text. They got it back. Somebody uh, somebody brought it to them. So I have a feeling we'll be connecting again at some point. I really do. I like that. Yeah. I'll take that feeling. All right. Definitely. We'll stay in touch. And thank you again. And uh, right. yeah, signing go. off. <laughs> <laughs> like, Seacrest out. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go beyond beliefs.com. Thanks again, Debbie. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. We'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.